Every morning, millions of people drink their coffee and read the exact same email. In this video, we're gonna talk about why we think Morning Brew can be a billion dollar brand. Morning Brew is a newsletter with over two and a half million subscribers founded by two Michigan grads, Alex Lieberman and Austin Reef. The reason we have such a high open rate compared to other email newsletters that we would consider peers is because we have such an engaged audience because they, they know that we know them. You're in a suit. Yeah. You never wear suits. That's true. So traditionally, business news, analysis, media has been kind of in an ivory tower, inaccessible, difficult language. It was hard to contextualize why a piece of business news was important or what it meant. The Wall Street Journal, the Financial Times, Bloomberg were written by professionals for professionals. But Morning Brew is creating the largest community of future business leaders and we're doing it through just amazing and engaging content. What Alex and Austin saw was that there were a ton of aspiring professionals, a ton of young people who were trying to make sense of the world and understand these storylines that they could translate these stories down to. There's so much content out there. That's why we think this opportunity exists is to really, you know, cut through the clutter and come at business from an angle that we know is intriguing to our audience. Having an audience is everything for us right now. Like it's one thing to have distribution and people that are actually paying attention to what we put out, but I've always really leveraged our audience to ask what they want, to understand which industry vertical should we go in? Do they really want another newsletter? Do they like this? Do they not like that? What type of podcast? Uh, and getting feedback and asking human beings what they like and what they don't like has always been incredibly instrumental. You can't have a great brand without a devoted and loyal audience. The Morning Brew audience is not only loyal, but it is growing rapidly. What happens is like people love it and so then they tell other people about it. And so okay. our view was as long as the product is great, then we develop things like our referral program and just things to Got make it. it super easy for the reader to share with their network. In January of 2018, they hit 100,000 subscribers. Just one year later, they hit 1 million subs in January of 2019. And now in 2020, in September, they hit 1 million opens on a single email. It's insane. Insane. The writers want to know about the business of Morning Brew and the business people of Morning Brew want to learn about writing and content creation and to make these posts. And so there was never like a mandate to do it. We just built this culture of like constantly sharing because we, well, I think we also grew up in this era where we're not a bunch of seasoned veterans. Like Axios was launched out of the Politico veterans where they already knew how to do nearly everything. They're hitting a home run. We, we don't come from these legacy media bounds. So it's always been most advantageous for us is to show what we've learned and either someone can say, actually, you went about it wrong. Here's a better way of doing it, which is perfect in the best case scenario. Or somebody saying, I learned so much from you. Can I teach you something else? And then can we trade? So like the barriers to entry for getting really valuable information were so low for us, have been so low. So for me, I found out from the first post that people would reach out and comment and DM and teach me so much that I would learn more by converting the presentations I would give to the team and making it public than I would have otherwise. So like this has been an incredible learning experience for all of us in any which way. We, we feel the exact same way. We do that with our vlog and we had like a lawyer watch us like talk about our operating agreement and he was like, yo, you need to like resolve some things pronto. But it's like that we would have not known that if we hadn't been doing it. And that, that's the best part is like if you make a mistake, like the cost of failure is so low, like you say sorry and then you fix it and then you do better the next time. I think we're so overloaded with information at any given moment, right? That like it's impossible to know what actually matters. Sometimes it feels impossible, certainly it's not, but to have somebody to kind of be the sieve at the top is really, really useful. And, and I think that has been the role we've stepped into and one that fits really, really well. I think. At the core of every single thing that Morning Brew does is keeping the audience front of mind. We take that really, really seriously and we know that the reason we have such a high open rate compared to other email newsletters that we would consider peers is because we have such an engaged audience 
because they they know that we know them. And I think part of that is a function of this often is a, a young editorial team. It's people who are writing for people like us. And that has been a huge uh, aid, I think, in creating that heart loyal audience because we know what it's like. We know what the funny jokes are. We spend a ton of time online. Yeah. Um, and we know what the big questions are too. I think that's that's really important in terms of relatability. Um, but you know, before we, we launch anything, we do such a deep dive on what we want the audience to look like and what we expect in reality the audience to look like. So have you ever heard of the acronym HENRY for a psychographic? I haven't. H-E-N-R-Y stands for high earning, not rich yet. And it's this psychographic of the young, ambitious, uh, growing professional that is going to have a ton of buying power in the future but is still at a stage where they're just at the you know early initial point of building wealth, building uh, buying power, maybe they're still paying off loans or something like that. And that is basically the exact psychographic that reads The Morning Brew. That makes so much sense. That is why they're able to build a really substantial advertising business. Um, they did $20 million worth of revenue last year. And this year, uh, Alex Lieberman, the CEO, has said that they are on pace to hit $30 million worth of revenue, with less than a million raised in total. And the reason is that they can get advertisers who are willing to pay a lot, a really high per unit fee, to reach the readers of the brew. As luck would have it, as we are shooting and producing this very video, news just broke that Business Insider is in talks with Morning Brew to acquire it. It's reported that Morning Brew is currently being valued at $75 million. Now what we can back into is that uh, Alex Lieberman has publicly stated that their goal for the year was to hit 20 million in revenue for 2020. And if that is all factual and they're doing that $20 million on one podcast and four newsletters, they're getting a 3.5x multiple on that $20 million in revenue. So we promised you at the beginning of the video that we would talk about how Morning Brew could grow to be a billion dollar brand in order to try to wrap our heads around what a modern media company worth $1 billion might look like. We need to make two comps to Morning Brew and then we'll hone in on exactly how to make that happen. The first is the tried and true bellwether of digital transformation of relevant journalism, the New York Times. Now the New York Times is a publicly traded company that is currently worth about $6.65 billion. So they're a little above that billion dollar mark, but a great example of how a diverse media empire can grow to be substantially valuable in the modern age. They've achieved that valuation on $403 million in annual revenue. Some very simple math tells us that that is a 16 and a half multiple on revenue in order to get the total company value. Now multiples are tricky, they're funny. You just in private markets need to find one buyer willing to pay a higher multiple in order to get a higher valuation. But as a general rule of thumb, Multiples will go up for media businesses that have proven that they can generate revenue from multiple sources in multiple different mediums and forms of media and that just have more revenue in general because it indicates a safer bet for a potential equity investor. That's why this valuation is so high. The other reason it's so high is they have a fantastic legacy brand that everyone knows will and should be around for a long period of time. They have a fantastic number of resources for connection to their audience. That includes 6.5 million paying subscribers to the New York Times. And we don't actually know this number, but safe to say, that at least double that 12 million subscribers to their different email lists that might not be New York Times subscribers, but want to stay in the New York Times sphere of influence. They also have a ton of podcasts. Most people are familiar with The Daily, a model for daily news updates that has been replicated by all the other major institutions, the Financial Times, the Wall Street Journal. They've all got their version of The Daily after seeing the New York Times success, but they also have a number of personality and topic-driven podcasts that are also revenue generators and great diverse businesses. Private companies like The Brew are gonna be much cagier with their numbers being shared publicly. They're not under any obligation like The New York Times is to have a transparent profit and loss statement, balance sheet. But whenever companies have 
big funding announcements. They tend to also share some of their numbers as a point of bragging, as a point of headline grabbing. And The Skim, a similar company predicated on a newsletter-based business model and relationship with their audience, did that back in 2018. During that last round of fundraising, they were valued at approximately $100 million. Now they got there with almost $30 million raised, which is substantially more than the brew, which has raised less than $1 million. But in conjunction with that raise, they announced that they were on pace to do about $20 million in revenue. Now they've been hit with some hard times during the pandemic. They've had to lay off staff. So we're comfortable estimating that they're probably a little bit under that $20 million mark that they were running at last year. But if you take that very basic back of the napkin math, we can infer that the skim was able to accomplish a 5X multiple on revenue. Why is that 5X so much lower than the 16 and a half for the New York Times? There's a lot less assuredness of the strength of their business model, and it is substantially less diversified. Even though they have 7 million subscribers on their free newsletter, we're not sure how many of those have been transferred into paying subscribers. If they're paying, they're paying substantially less than a subscriber would pay for a Wall Street Journal or a Bloomberg or a New York Times subscription. And they only have two podcasts that they've spun out of that existing audience. All this indicates not necessarily a weak or broken business model, but just a less mature one, which is what informs the relatively lower multiple on revenue for their valuation. And finally, we come to the brew. Now we were gifted some information in the process of making this video that Business Insider was acquiring a stake in the brew that valued the entire entity at somewhere around or maybe just a little bit over $75 million. We can combine that valuation with public statements that the CEO has made about 2020 revenue, expecting to hit the $20 million number and get a very simple three and a half X multiple on revenue for the brew's valuation. Despite this revenue being very strong and then being a profitable enterprise, the reason for the lower multiple is tied to the relatively immature diversification of revenue streams for the business. They've got just north of 2.5 million subscribers to their daily newsletter. They have no paying subscribers yet, although there are indications that they will be launching something like this in the near future. And they only have one business podcast launched. These are going to be the drivers of this multiple going up in the future. It will obviously impact a growth in revenue, but that growth in revenue in conjunction with a healthier multiple on the business is how the brew gets to a billion dollar valuation. So now we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes of the Morning Brew business. We're gonna start with the flagship newsletter. It's been publicly stated that they do more than two and a half million subscribers, probably trending close to three million, and they just surpassed one million opens on the newsletter. That's huge growth, incredibly impressive. Now, The Brew does not share their ad rates publicly, so I did a little bit of internet research and found that the average cost per open, a metric for valuing advertising in a newsletter, is about $20. Now, that $20 is for every thousand opens, so some basic Back of the napkin math, 1 million opens, $20 per thousand opens, means that an ad for Morning Brew is gonna start at $20,000 for one edition of the newsletter. Now they do three ads per daily newsletter, which means that they're probably bringing in, at a minimum, $60,000 per newsletter. They put that newsletter out six times per week, they're four weeks every month, which means that at a minimum, we can estimate that the flagship newsletter does $1.4 million in revenue on a monthly basis. Annualized, that brings us to right around $17 million annually. We're not gonna break down every single industry specific newsletter, but Alex just tweeted out some stats from the Retail Brew, which has 150,000 subs, a 45% open rate, and comes out three times per week. Now, I'm going to assume that the cost per open rate for something that is more narrowly defined and more niche is going to go up. I also think that with a well-developed sales staff like the Brew has created, they're going to be able to extract more than the industry average for a newsletter, and and say that there's $35 CPOs for retail brew. If we throw all those numbers together and assume just one ad per newsletter, 
That is a $28,000 per month business and a $330,000 annual business. They've also publicly shared that they hit 5 million downloads for their podcast, Business Casual. Hold up. Five million? That's a crazy set in six months. That is like the 1% of 1% of business podcasts. It's pretty insane. The average business podcast gets barely over 100 downloads per episode. That's bananas. As a fellow podcaster, I know that the average CPM is about $20. If we were to guesstimate that they're gonna do another 5 million downloads next year, and I think that's underestimating, and knowing that they do two to three ad slots per episode, we can back into the revenue run rate by doing three ad slots times $20 CPMs times 5,000. 5,000 is the number of thousands in 5 million. And expect business casual to be at least a $300,000 business. So that's how Morning Brew got to $20 million in annual revenue. Next, we're gonna cover the five drivers of them reaching $150 million and our estimation of a billion dollar valuation. Number one, double the subscriber base to the Morning Brew flagship newsletter. Very simply, between paid ad spend, word of mouth, a dynamite referral program, and now plugging into more entities owned by their co-owner Business Insider, we could reasonably expect them to get to 5 million subs. That number seems very attainable when you consider the fact that the skim has hit 7 million subs, proving that there is a market for free daily newsletters informing you on business news already in existence. That would at least double their annual revenue for that product, but more importantly, give them a larger audience to cross-pollinate onto their other businesses. Number two, grow their niche brands. So as we showed with the retail brew breakdown, those newsletters are great businesses unto themselves, but there is an enormous opportunity, particularly post coronavirus pandemic, to do even more with these niche audiences. Each of them could be spun out and have their own podcast. Each of them could have their own annual event where folks from the industry get together. Those are big businesses and Morning Brew could sit at the center of them just the way traditional trade journals did in the past. Another super obvious strategy, they have a bona fide star in Kinsey Grant, but much like the growth of Barstool, which added stars like Pat McAfee and Michael Rappaport to their ensemble of characters, Morning Brew has the potential to provide a platform for other business-centric podcasts with star profile business personalities and massively expand the listenership of their podcast base. Fourth, launch their paid subscription service. Now people have been scouring Morning Brew job postings indicating that there is a paid analyst role that they have hired for or will be hiring for in the near future. And the idea, much like the Hustles product, Trends, would be that a paid subscription to a newsletter with specific in-depth insights that folks can't get elsewhere would provide not only recurring revenue, but more importantly, diversified revenue, not just from advertisers, but also from the subscribers and readers that have a daily relationship with the brew. The fifth and final opportunity is frankly why Han and I are making this video in the first place, and it is YouTube. YouTube is currently where the brew houses both clips and full length interviews from the business casual podcast, but we think there is a ton of room for improvement. From a monetization standpoint, a extensive YouTube audience would increase the CPMs that they could charge for their podcast episodes, but even further, there's opportunities for brand deals, spin-off shows similar to our Piper Rundown, and a general deepening of affinity for the Morning Brew brand here in digital video format. Now, rightfully, Austin and Alex have avoided digital video as a focus up until this point. They did that because they watched other digital media companies pivot to video, waste a ton of money on production, and end up crashing and burning, or at the very least, not growing at the rate that they had otherwise hoped to. But now that they have an audience numbering in the millions, a recognizable brand that inspires loyalty and a successful podcast with fantastic entrepreneurs as guests, 
Barbara Corcoran, Reed Hastings, Scott Galloway, the list goes on and on and on and on. They could focus there and do some basic best practices for growth. They could collab with existing large YouTubers focused on the business space. They could make sure that every single one of their thumbnails for their videos has the faces of the folks they're interviewing prominently front and center. And finally, they could add end screens and use the basic YouTube functionality of a subscribe button and a suggested next video button within the videos that they've already published to get better audience retention, more subscriber growth, and build another business asset. Those are the big five. There are even more than what we listed here. In a potential post-cookie world with GDPR blocking the ability for most websites to cookie audiences and follow them around the internet, having people's email addresses, I suspect, is only going to be more valuable in the years to come. Similarly, we always underestimate the power of an audience, the power of a brand to be the foundation of more business units to be spun out. They've already experimented with this, selling copywriting services to other brands, but you can imagine the future where the brew having the ear of millions of people of a very specific psychographic could be translated into many more business opportunities. I can't wait to see how they continue to grow. We'll be loyal subscribers checking out all the things that they spin off. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. Thank you for watching to the end of the Piper Report. We hope you enjoyed this analysis of The Morning Brew. Just to help us maintain our lead on their business channel, please hit subscribe. And if you liked this video, we have so much more content coming out similar to it. We have a report coming out about Barstool Sports in the near future. So hit subscribe, stay notified. We'll catch you next time.